and we're into DC Lesson 7, Part A, and we're going to be examining parallel circuits. So let's get into it. So this lesson explains parallel circuit in which all the components in a circuit are connected directly to the power supply. Using our textbook, Electrical Principles by Phillips, we're looking at sections 7.1, 7.2 and 7.3. The parallel circuit, voltage in the parallel circuit and current in the parallel circuit. So here's our parallel circuit and we have two ways of wiring or connecting but we draw the circuit diagram the same way. So the first way we can wire, I'll just quickly turn on my pen, is we can take a lead from each of the loads, in this case the lamps, and take it directly to the power supply. You can see the black wire on each one coming directly through to our power supply. So what we're doing is we're taking the wire through and connecting to the power supply. Taking the wire for this one through and connecting the power supply and taking the wire for this one through and connecting to the power supply. And on the other side, we're doing the same thing. So that's what's happening. One way of connecting up the parallel circuit, putting the battery or the applied voltage. So I'll just call it AP for applied voltage is in parallel, I just use two vertical lines to represent parallel with the first lamp, which is in parallel with the second lamp, which is in parallel with the third lamp, so on and so forth. I'll just change the colour. The second way of doing it is screen to stay in the one place will be right is this one here we're going to connect the loads of the lamps by looping it's called loop between them so instead of going directly we've looped and you can see we've done there so this in this case we've looped from this one to this one to the next lamp and then down to the supply we've looped There we go. We end up with the same circuit though. The applied voltage here ends up in parallel with the first lamp, the second lamp and the third lamp. So I quite often use this vertical lines to represent parallel. So in a parallel circuit each component connects directly to the power source. So here's some examples of parallel circuits. The first one is um, are both parallel circuits. So here we have a battery A here connected in parallel with the resistor, which is in parallel with that resistor, which is in parallel with that resistor. So we have one, two, three, four components in parallel. Over on the right hand side, we have a resistor in parallel with a voltmeter because voltmeters are always connected in parallel. And all of that is in parallel with the supply. So we have our voltmeter in parallel with our resistor in parallel with our supply. So again, multiple parallel circuits, different ways of representing them. So, voltage in a parallel circuit. This is an important concept, just like we had in series circuits. It's important to get this right. So, in this particular case, we have a 12 volt battery here. Right, that's the applied voltage. E right, that's the applied voltage.
and it's at 12 volts and if I measure the voltage here across lamp 1 I'm going to get 12 volts so the voltage drop across the lamp is 12 volts because it's in parallel with the applied voltage remember that our applied voltage is the voltage source where the potential difference is coming from light 2 has a voltage drop of 12 volts and of course because they're all connected number 3 has a voltage drop of 12 volts so a little subtle difference in the way we describe things when we're talking about the voltage across the loads we call them voltage drops and when we're talking about the voltage supplied by a battery we call it the applied voltage because they are slightly different in their concept even though in a parallel circuit they work out to be the same thing so the voltage across each component in a parallel circuit is equal to the source or the applied voltage if we were to do this as a circuit diagram we you would have all the voltmeters were going are going to read the same so again for example let's say we had six volts this time on our battery then we're going to get obviously six volts on this meter we're going to get six volts here we're going to get six volts here and we're going to get six volts here because the voltage applied is the same as the voltage that is a voltage drop across the lamps and the way we describe that mathematically is we say the voltage total is equal to voltage 1 is equal to voltage 2 is equal to voltage 3 so that's how we express it mathematically so the voltage total in this particular case is the voltage applied and voltage 1 is the voltage drop across lamp 1 voltage drop across lamp 2 and voltage drop across lamp 3 at infinitum no matter how many are added in parallel they will always equal the same as each other and the total voltage or the applied voltage to the circuit so let's move up to the next aspect of parallel circuits and that's the current in the parallel circuit so you can see here let's think about our ohms law for just a moment before we worry about um, all the ammeters so we've got digital ammeters in the circuit let's look at the applied voltage that's this one here we have 10 volts applied to this circuit and connected in the circuit in parallel with each other we have some resistors we have a 100 ohm resistor we have a 20 ohm resistor and we have a 10 ohm resistor so the voltage drop across each of these resistors because they're connected in parallel is the voltage drop and I might just draw it in across here so our voltage drop across our first resistor is going to be 10 volts and our voltage drop across our second resistor is going to be 10 volts and of course our voltage drop across our third resistor also 10 volts now the reason our 
and leaders are not going to have too much of an effect on us is that they do have a tiny bit of resistance inside them but it's less than one ohm it's very small so very small so the resistance in our meters is very very small so for now we will account for the resistance in our meters a little bit later but for now our, we're going to just say the resistances are so small we're not going to worry about them so we're interested in the current in each of the branch and this depends on the resistance in the branch the voltage of the branch is the same 10 volts but the resistance is different and we know from Ohm's law that I equals V divided by R so if you take 10 and divide it by 100 so here's our 10 and we divide it by 100 we're going to end up with 0.1 of an amp or 100 milliamps so that's going to be our current running through our circuit like this so let me just draw that in again the screen decided to move on for some reason so remember our I equals V divided by R and on that first one we had 10 on 100 giving us 100 milliamps on the second one we've got 10 divided by 20 which is a half so we've got half an amp flowing down through our 20 ohm resistor and we're getting half an amp or 500 milliamps displayed on our ammeter and then finally with our 10 ohms it also has 10 volts so I equals 10 on 10 10 on 10 is 1 and we're going to get 1 amp flowing down through here so our total current will be 0.1 plus 0.5 plus 1 amp giving us a total of 1.6 amps in the whole circuit 1.6 amps because the total current is the addition of all the branch currents so each of these branch currents is coming up here and some current is splitting off there some current is continuing along here then that current some of it splits off and goes down there and some of it continues through here so in a parallel circuit the addition of all the branch currents equals the total current so how do we go about finding the branch current well I've kind of already started to explain that to you so we just use our ohms law to do that so the equation is I equals V on R V is the applied voltage and we don't give it bother giving it a number because it's the same throughout the entire circuit so I1 equals the applied voltage divided by R1 well the resistor that you're wanting to measure the current through so in this particular case we've got 10 volts let's turn this pointer back on 10 volts we've got 100 ohms therefore we have 10 on that we can get rid of that we get rid of that we've got one tenth or a tenth of an ohm tenth of an amp I should say or 0.1 of an amp or 100 milliamps could be expressed either of those ways so total current 
And again, we've already kind of started to explain total current. In this particular case, we had our 0.1 or a tenth of an amp, then we had our half an amp in this branch, and then we had a whole amp in the third branch, all related to these resistance values. It's the resistance that determines the current. And the total current, as I said, is the addition, giving us 1.6 amps. And this is called Kirchhoff's current law. Because Kirchhoff's current law says that the current into a particular node has to equal the current out of the node. So at this particular node here, here's the node, we have 1.6 amps entering and here we have 0.1 exiting and along here I've got 1.1. 5 amps continuing in this direction. So as the current continues and gets to this node, the current in at this point is the 1.5 and we have 0.5 of it going down here and the other 1 amp continuing along here. So Kirchhoff's current law says that the current into a node has to equal the sum of the currents out of the node. So at this node, we've got 1.5 in and we've got 1.5 out. At this node here, I've got 1.6 in and I've got 1.6 out when I add these two together. And if we're going to explain that or, or express it mathematically, here's the formula. I total is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus etc etc etc. So the total current in a parallel circuit is the sum or the addition of all the branch currents. So Kirchhoff's current law explained just a, uh, a little more prettily than I did it with my pen. So here's our 1.6 coming into the first node. They call it a junction, but it's called a node. 1.6 in, our 1 point out, our 1.5. Second node or second junction, 0.5 out, 1 out. And that adds up to the same as the 1.5 in. And again, we just call this Kirchhoff's current law. Now the same applies to these nodes down here by the way. So here the current in would be two currents in and one current out. Two currents in and one current out. And the same rule applies. The addition of the currents in has to equal the addition of the currents out. In this case as an example, we'd have 1.5 here, we'd have 1 amp here, so on the output we'd have 1.5 amps out. So Kirchhoff's current law works on both sides. And again, just I put this extra in to uh, just make sure we understand, here's a node so this is our node and we've got current one in, current two in and current three in and in this particular case we've got current four out and current five out. So that it always doesn't have to be two, two ins and one out. In this case there's um, three ins and two outs. It might be two outs and three ins. It doesn't matter what the combinations are. But here, the black ones are the ins and the red ones are the outs. 
and Kirchhoff's law says when you add up the ins and you add up the outs, you've got to end up with zero current. So all the current into a node has got to leave the node and all the current that leaves the node has got to come into the node. So why don't we do a quick example to uh, just reaffirm this in our heads. So here we have 25 volt supply in parallel with a 50 ohm resistor in parallel with a we don't know resistor. What we do know is that the total current, the I total, is 1.2 amps. So let's list off what we do know. We know R1 at 50 ohms. We know the total current at 1.2 amps. And we know the applied voltage at 25 volts, which also means that the voltage across R1 and the voltage across R2 are also the same. So straight away we can find the current in I1. So I equals V on R, so 25 divided by 50. gives us 0.5 of an amp. So our 25 volts divided by 50, so this is 25 volts divided by our 50 ohms, and we work out that we have 0 0.5 of an amp flowing through this resistor. Well, if we you know that we have half an amp flowing through a resistor down through here, then Kirchhoff's nodal current law tells us that whatever 1.2 is minus 0 0.5 has got to equal 0 0.5. Seven amps, and that's what we've calculated here. So now we know the current through here at zero point seven. So we know that R equals V divided by I. So 25 divided by 0.7 equals 36 ohms. So we're going to end up with about 36 ohms as the value for R2. So that brings us to the end of uh, Lesson 7, Part A. Hope you've enjoyed learning the introductory part to parallel circuits.